Welcome back to Adulthood Friends. This is the discussion-based podcast where two former childhood acquaintances, now friends, discuss the things that adverb, Josh. Adversely. The things that adversely matter. Adversely. That's your adverb of the week. And I'm Aya. I'm Josh. And today for episode 51, uh, we're talking about domestic abuse. So what constitutes abuse? Who can be a victim of abuse? Is there such a thing as mutual abuse? And how can you recognize the signs of abuse or an abusive partner? Yeah. Shall we get into it? Let's just get right into it. And we're back. Oh, it's so good to be back. It sure is, Josh. Yeah, so today we're, we've got a serious topic, not like words. <laughs> you talk about words are very serious. I know. We did get pretty serious about that. Yeah. Yeah, but how have you been, Josh? I want to ask you how you've been. I asked you first. You can't just. Okay, fine. I. (laughs) Well, the last time we spoke, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I didn't know if I had COVID. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You were recovering from COVID. I'm assuming you are. I was pretty fully recovered now, except for a little cough. I was still. I was okay. I was barely. I just had a leftover cough, which I still occasionally have. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if I had it. (laughs) Since then, I found out that I do not have it, and I didn't have it. (laughs) And that's good so that I could go do my clinical trial. Mm -hmm. Although I just found out. So I actually went, remember that was supposed to be like a $10,000 clinical trial. I go for 15 days. I do remember. Yeah. But I was apparently kind of accepted as an alternate. Mm. So basically what that meant was I went for four days and today they just sent me home. So actually I just came home from the trial today but they rolled me over to the next cohort, Mm. which means that I can like kind of do it again. But there's like kind of two options. I could do another 10,000 one on top of the money I just made for the first four days to basically do nothing. How much did you make on the first four days? What do you mean do nothing, but like being prodded and poked? Well, I only had to be really poked to the first, you know, taking blood like the first day. Mm. And then the fourth day was a lot of these machines I had to be hooked up to to measure my heart and stuff. I didn't have to get any blood taken. Okay. anymore so that was good. good yeah and then they sent me home so I didn't have to take the drug mm. so they have another full 15 day version of this to make 10,000 but that's going to be sometime in July and I'd have to rescreen for it and maybe I'd be able to do it or she said she can roll me over to this next cohort that's this Friday yeah. so like just in a couple of days from when we're recording and then I would just be a week long mm-hmm. and again I would do four days of like nothing <laughs> and then I would dose only once Mm-hmm. And they, you know, do some tests after that, poke me and prod me a bit, and I'd be home, you know, cool. just basically a week total for that. So you decided on that one? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I'd get basically fifty five hundred for that. Sweet. Yeah. So then, you know, that plus the couple thousand I got for the other one. Everyone's knowing all the money I make from this, mm-hmm. which I need to tell them the money I make from this. Otherwise, they're like, "Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this <laughs> to yourself?" Well, you're helping science, as we. Yeah, I'm helping science. It's right for science. Helping science. Yes. Hashtag for science. Yeah. That means though we had. This this couple day window in here where I just like came home because I was eating just like clinical trial food and mm. actually it was very healthy I have to say it was actually a good healthy routine nice. for once Jesus Josh <laughs> eating something healthy they were it was like a low diet, carb Coke, low sugar diet giants. they had yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's pretty healthy although the first thing I did is I got out of here today I had waffles <laughs> waffles and potatoes did, and... did they taste sweeter because you haven't had as much sugar over the it past maybe few did it was very sweet but I don't know I think it was just mm-hmm. really sweet yeah. I went to a place that was called Love You Latte. Mm, cool. It's kind of cute. It's it's a it's a pun. It is. Yeah, we know how much you love puns. So yeah, but anyways, we had a couple of days here. We're like, let's record some episodes here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So right. we're doing this, uh, you know, super light topic of uh, domestic super abuse. Super light. Just like pretty chill again, you know, just like some of our other light topics. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like abortion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But before that again, yeah. Tell me about you. I don't really have anything to report. I'm still in Quebec. I'm doing just like some writing and I did like some, there was a dance festival here on the weekend. So I signed up for some classes with some of the choreographer dancers who were there, Ooh, nice. which was kind of neat. Yeah. And you're getting writing done. And I'm getting writing done. Yeah. I've got, I don't have that much. Like I'm not that, I'm not so prolific, but my goal is just like 500 words a day minimum, which isn't that much. And like a lot of it, I'm like, mm, I don't like this that much, but it's just like, just keep going. Just have something you can edit it later. So I've got maybe, I don't know. I think like the, it's like 15 pages single space. So I think that's a fair amount. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good amount. It's something. And I'm doing a, a lot of planning. Amount. Yeah. And it kind of like the more you write, the more stuff comes to you. So I 
do feel like things are coming together a bit more. And it is one of those things that's very different from, I don't want to talk too much about writing here. I know we have like whole episodes dedicated to it, but like it's different from academic writing where I have to watch every word and it's always like very, everything I have to look up. I have to make sure I kind of actually get into this and like lose track of time. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, it's been an hour and I didn't notice. So, which probably means I'm getting into some kind of flow state, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm proud of you again. And now let's talk about domestic abuse. What? Sorry. <laughs> what was that? I just said I'm proud of you. I said it Thanks, before, but I'm very proud of you. If I can be proud of you. As a of course. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate I'm, that. Thank I'm, you. I know how much of a, a goal this is for you and I see you uh, working towards yeah. that. It's very well, cool to see. I respect you a lot for that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, even if it sucks, at least I'll have tried it. So. And how much longer are you in Quebec for? Just uh, a week and a bit. I leave in a week and a few days. My friend okay. is coming to visit me for the last uh, few days. So she's flying into Montreal. We're going to spend like a day in Montreal. And then we're going to spend like a day in Quebec City. Like obviously we'll come back here in between. But I'm and right now you're in each one. Trois Rivières. Trois Rivières. Trois Rivières. Trois Rivières. No, if I, I don't think about it too much, Trois I can Rivière. say it better. But if I, I just try, say it like not. It I'm just saying it like an Anglophone. Trois Rivières. How are you getting the chance to practice your French there? Or? I am, yeah. That's yeah, good. I am. Yeah, it, it is good. And I have had enough interactions where like nobody, they're not like, do you want me to switch to English for you? So nobody, so I'm always like, woohoo, I trick them. Although I'm sure they know that I'm not a native French speaker. Anyways, so we're going to visit a little bit around and then she's going to come drive back with me to London. Cool. So yeah, that's it. That's what's up with me. Domestic abuse. Let's do it. Okay, well, why are we, uh, why, what triggered us wanting to talk about this topic today? Well, there are a few things. I mean, this has been on our list for a long time. It has been, yeah. We topics. have a list of topics we want to get We have a list to. of topics. I think we both have our own kind of, well, as most people do, have, we have our own experiences. You have, I, I don't know want to say for you, but I've already mentioned this, that I was involved with, uh, or I still am, with an organization in London that's actually the Women's Shelter and the Sexual Assault Center that moved together to form ANOVA for domestic abuse survivors and victims. So I was working at their crisis line for a while and I do some other little volunteer jobs as well. And uh, yes, yeah, so this has been a topic that I was a little bit afraid to approach in some ways because it's like, it's a big one. It's heavy, yeah. It's heavy. And I bet we both wondered a little bit like how how qualified are we to exactly. talk about this kind of a thing, I right? Mean, should, should we have no. brought in, uh, a guest on? Like who... an expert of some kind, right? Or someone who really knows. But that's not our podcast really necessarily. That's not right? really what it is. I mean, it kind of was with Simone a little bit, but... No, I mean, it's great yeah, when we can do that, sense. when we bring on a yeah. friend who's an expert in something. But, you know, we we have opinions and we, yeah. we like to learn and discuss and learn from discussing with each other. And by no means are we the <laughs> be all end all. On no, any of these for sure. But I think, I mean, there are enough resources for people to listen to experts. This is, that's not what this is. So if that's what you were tuning in for, yeah. please don't. But I mean, you're fairly well informed on a personal and a kind of more. I mean, I want to be. I don't want to call it academic level, but you know, you, you know. I lot. try to be. I mean, I'm informed as much as it's <laughs> it's hard to you know what I mean there are some people who might say that I may never be able to be as informed as certain people who oh, let me put this a different way sorry that your lived experience is limited or something? my lived is experience is obviously different from other people's lived experience mm. right and I can't say that I Everyone's know experience. or can totally understand somebody else's lived experience and I want to say that right off the bat I have my own lived experience and it's very it's probably different than a lot of people and the same as some others I mean the same in a kind of general sense we can get into that but you know, on one hand, I think I have talked about it before, you know, I felt that my mother was, you know, when she was alive, I felt that she was quite abusive mm -hmm. towards me and my brothers. But I, what I don't think I talked about that much was the fact that she was also pretty abusive to my father. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I used to recognize it as such, but that's absolutely what it was. And one of the things that triggered me really thinking about that and acknowledging that was this like trial that's been, yeah. yeah, this trial that's been going on in the news recently. It had just wrapped up. It's the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. It's a defamation trial, uh, which we can explain in a second. And I just want to say, like, I did not think I'd be watching <laughs> a trial about. Are you not a celebrity? celebrity. Uh, I don't care about celebrity. Guy. I don't follow, especially not six weeks of a defamation trial. Like, mm. it would be different too if I was like this huge Johnny Depp or Amber Heard fan, right? right? I'm. I like Johnny Depp as an actor. I've liked him in the stuff he's in. You know, I like Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I've liked Ed Wood. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a bit of a deeper cut. Yeah. 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 And Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Oh my God. Yeah. All the Ed, all the Ed movies. All the Ed did. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't say I'm a huge Johnny Depp fan, I, especially not mm -hmm. as a person. I didn't really know. Or I, if, no. As far as I understood, he was a pretty private person, which is funny now. 
<laughs> that we know yeah, every little seriously. thing. Yeah. And then Amber Heard, I had seen her in more movies than I realized. I'd actually seen her in Zombieland. Mm. She had a bit role in there, but it was a, a funny oh, I role. I didn't even notice that. She okay. was like a zombie who cares? girl. I, I don't care about her. <laughs> Sorry, I don't care about her. She was a girl who turned into a zombie mm. and tried to eat oh, okay. Jesse Eisenberg's character. Cool. <laughs> and he had to like smash a toilet uh-huh. lid, I guess, okay. on her head. <laughs> and then I saw her in Drive Angry, but I didn't remember that. That's with Nicolas Cage. And then, of course, what we all really know her from is Aquaman. Mm. which I don't know if you saw I did yeah Oh, you did see Aquaman. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. again, if I'm being totally honest, I liked her in Aquaman. I thought she was pretty good. I don't really remember her. I just remember the writing being like very predictable and annoying. It was a blockbuster for sure, you know, but it was a lot of fun. Blockbusters can be good. Yeah. It made like okay. over a billion dollars. People had a lot of fun watching this movie. I don't think it's like a great film, but I had a good time at the theater. I don't even think it's a good film, but it's an okay, like yes. if you want to watch a fun film. Anyways, we're not here to talk about Aquaman, are we? Well, is this related? Well, the point okay. of bringing that up is, you know, we're going to talk about John. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard moving forward. And it's important to point out that, at least on my end, I don't know about you, Aya, but I wasn't a huge super fan of Johnny Depp, although I liked his acting, and I didn't hate Amber Heard in any way. Mm. I, in fact, I liked her in her performances, mm. and I did not know anything else about her otherwise. Mm. Okay. But this trial basically brought up a lot of important issues which some people are saying is going to change the face of certain things in our culture moving forward. So Mm. I think it's worth talking about. I mean, we'll talk about the issues at large, but also uh, the details of this trial, because I think it's in the end of things, it's a really interesting, fascinating trial. And um, yeah. Yeah. So I was actually very reluctant to even follow the trial at first, because I was like, well, one, I was kind of annoyed that this had taken over so many important discussions like this all over social media yeah and it was like why is this now the example of you know what domestic abuse might be why is everybody so I don't know I also don't follow celebrities or generally care about that I'm I'm just saying how I my thinking has evolved since then obviously maybe we should also start by explaining for anyone who doesn't know what why this has anything to do with domestic abuse you know at first I was annoyed so this trial about what is turning out to be a man accusing a woman of defaming him for claiming that he's a wife beater has become so ubiquitous. I don't know, whatever the word is. It's everywhere. I was annoyed that it was taking over everything and that now this is going to be used, and we'll get into this, how this could be used by people who already don't believe women to say, like, look at this example that everybody knows about now, essentially, of this woman lying. And it annoyed me. And I kind of distanced myself and was like, I don't want to hear about it. And Josh kept telling me about it. And I was like, I don't want to hear about it. Eventually, I kind of came around to be like, when everyone's paying attention to something, it says something important about our culture and our ideas about whatever is going on. It's interesting the way you just said that. It says something important, not necessarily about the thing, but about but our about, own culture. Exactly. And about how we think about domestic abuse. And I was, I think I was most surprised. Again, this is just, I'm throwing this out there and I'm sure we'll get into it. I was most surprised by people being surprised that a man could be a victim of abuse. Like everybody's like, he's actually the victim. Yeah, no fucking kidding. You didn't know, oh, women can't be abusers. What is this shit? Like, (laughs) are we not people too? Can we not be monsters as well? Like there's a misogyny (laughs) to thinking that women can't be as abusive. That said, physically abusive is generally a little bit different. And statistics wise, men do not usually die of domestic violence. Whereas women, I mean, that's one of the top threats is other men. (laughs) Yeah, men are one of the top threats towards women. Towards women is their own partner yeah so that is something to keep in mind but anyways yeah now I'm gonna get too much into the weeds but I just wanted to say that I was like almost aggressively disinterested in this for a while because I didn't (laughs) want I didn't want to engage with what I was you're not the only one and I I thought like this is like celebrity like salacious celebrity gossip and some of the videos I was seeing were like these edited like look at this liar or look at how clever and cute Johnny Depp is and look at how horrible Amber Heard is and I was like it's different to just watch the actual yeah. footage on your own and come to your own conclusions. But also, I just, I don't like when things are like, oh my God, look at the details of, it's like very um, paparazzi celebrity gossip-esque. But there is more to it than that. And I Very think voyeuristic. Very voyeuristic. Like, let's hear these guys air their dirty laundry. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've come around. And I do I also have to say how I felt about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? I knew nothing about Amber Heard before 
I remember seeing that picture of her being hit and then I was like, who's Amber Heard? And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, she's that the hot girl and a bunch of stuff. And then of course I knew who Johnny Depp was. And I mean, full disclosure, like I loved him when I was younger. I very quickly, as soon as I saw the pictures, I was like, oh shit. Well, another guy who's an asshole, I guess. You Me know, too. I, didn't, I immediately thought. I didn't question it. Again, we'll get into that. But yeah, I immediately yeah. thought. Yeah. I mean, why not? Well, I was just like, of course, look at him. Sure. I and mean, I, I believe it. <laughs> I, just... I always knew he had, oh, I always knew. But like, I remember, like I said, I, when I was like, I don't know, 14, 15, I watched all the Johnny Depp movies I could get my hands on. I, you know, I was a fan. You're more of a fan than me. I was more. Yeah, definitely. I remember like, well, I was a little kid. Like I watched Benny in June, which is a bit of a more obscure one. I've heard of it. Yeah, It's good though. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't affect how I, when I watch videos of him being himself, I thought like, oh, he's a little pretentious. Uh, he's a little annoying, like as an adult, but you know, as a kid, I really liked him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that affected how I would have viewed him, but just for sake of. One of the things that really has bothered me is that there's a claim, especially now in the mainstream media. And I hate when I say the mainstream media as if I'm one of these conspiracy theorists against the mainstream media. <laughs> Although the more you see sometimes some of this, some of the like narratives going against what you see, to be yeah it feels like the narratives of some of the media are gaslighting us a little bit about what we're seeing mm. that's how i felt about at least in this case okay. especially when it writes toxic depth fans are supporting mm. him and causing it's like all the support for him in social media and online are just toxic fans of him right. as a person and actor is that it mm. i don't think so of course he's got a lot of fans some people are probably fans of him now that weren't because they've been watching the trial you know as i've actually read people say mm. i might be even more well, we'll get to that. So what happened? Let's talk about it, right? I don't know about you, Aya, but I actually was kind of privy to some of this a couple years ago as well, because there was another trial. I don't know if you heard about it. I this. remember you telling me about that trial and the recordings and all of that. Like, I don't know if it was, well, we haven't been talking necessarily for that long, but yeah, I remember you telling me about it. And I remember that original picture of, of her, I, I don't know, like when she has the bruise. It was on People Magazine, right? Or Yeah, I mean, I- She had like a, what looked to be a bruise on her face. I remember seeing that and looking into it. Yeah. She got a temporary restraining order, a TRO. Right, yeah. Against him yeah saying basically that he abused her in some way i think now she yeah. says it's yeah. a, a phone that was thrown at her face or something and nobody had any reason not to believe that mm. right i mean that you were just like oh my god this poor woman and he's also an older more powerful man like exactly it, it he's over 20 that. years older than her yeah just side note i read somewhere that like they'd ask kira knightley if there was ever any possible thing between her and him after the pirates movies and mm. i think she kind of hinted that she might have been like somewhat interested in some way and he had inferred that he was too old for her like Aww. because he was like 20 years older yeah <laughs> but then he ended up being with yeah. Amber Heard he's I guess 21 or 22 years older mm -hmm. I guess they met on the set of a movie called The Rum Diary or Rum Diaries whatever anyway that's just where they met <laughs> <laughs> yes okay okay i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go through you know at 16 like, years old they, yeah like, just to give a bit of context right these I two gotcha. people they met on the set of a movie mm -hmm. right and i think that was like in 2013 or something like that and they started dating some he was with a previous partner vanessa parody mm -hmm. for like 14 years in fact he was still with her when he met her yeah he has two kids with her he has two kids they met on the set of oh, i think it's like the ninth gate I don't know if they met there, but they're in it together. And I saw that movie as well. Oh, him and Vanessa Parody? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, look at you now. Look at you going, betraying your it's own. It's all coming back to me. I wasn't going to yeah. say what movie he met his ex with wife on with okay well so well now <laughs> you're getting into it so this is a, it's a slippery slope you know you're really saying that because you're afraid you're gonna fall into this trap that's exactly <laughs> yeah no i am we'll, we'll both try to keep each other on track okay. i guess okay. anyway he was with her for like 14 years and he was still with her technically when he met amber but then in like a year later he started dating amber heard and i think by 2015 they got married mm. and they were married for like 16 months and then divorce. And this divorce, you know, basically when we first learned about it was her going to the courthouse to get that TRO after claiming abuse. Mm. Okay. I remember hearing that briefly, I think at the time and going, oh, okay, maybe he's a shitty guy and I moved on. Right. And then again, I wasn't following all the details, of course, leading up to this, but in 2018, I guess she published an op-ed in the Washington Post. I'm just going to read the title of this op-ed. Amber Heard, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Mm. Now, we learned more details in the trial about this op-ed and who actually kind of ghost wrote it, <laughs> the ACLU. But she published this in the Washington Post with help from the ACLU. Mm. And after this, she became ambassador of like women's rights or something for the ACLU. Yeah. And 
for anybody who doesn't know, ACLU is the American Civil Liberties Union. Mm. Supposed to be good guys. She didn't explicitly say Johnny Depp's name in this article, but she did claim to be a victim of domestic violence, uh, domestic abuse, and kind of put a timeline on it as well. Said it was about two years ago mm. when I spoke up against violence against women that this happened. And then she said she faced, you know, her culture's wrath, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of women can relate to mm -hmm. hearing that and reading that. So Johnny Depp, of course, saw this and was like, this isn't cool because Johnny Depp has maintained that he never abused Amber Heard. So the first thing he did was in 2019, 2020, he sued, he didn't sue her actually first. In the UK, he sued the Sun newspaper. It's like a tabloid. And that had an article that said- uh, Is that the one that referred to him as a wife beater? It was like, why is JK Rowling supporting this guy if he's a, a wife beater or something like that? And he was like, um, fuck you. Yes, you are right. It asked something about JK Rowling. Like, why is JK Rowling working with wife beater Johnny Depp? Right. Right. So he sued the Sun newspaper, which, by the way, I think they even made a change to that and said like alleged wife beater or something after that, mm -hmm. too, because there was no proof that he was a wife beater. Right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a criminal trial or anything about that. So he sued them in the UK. And during this lawsuit, and again, he didn't sue Amber Heard. He sued the newspaper, mm -hmm. saying the newspaper defamed him. And she was therefore a witness mm -hmm. for the newspaper, right? And these parties were witnesses, and it wasn't him directly suing her. And differently in the UK, it wasn't a jury deciding this case. It was a single judge. During this time is when I started to see some stuff coming out, you know, online. And again, I immediately thought, yeah, he's probably... He's probably guilty of this. I mean, usually women don't lie about these things, right? Statistically speaking, it's unlikely to be the case. So why would it be the case here? So during this time, I think this is when I probably told you about those audio recordings or shared them with you because I had listened to these audio recordings and these audio recordings are, they flip the whole script around. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'll read a few excerpts from those audio recordings just to give an idea, because basically in these audio recordings of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and in case anybody's wondering why are there audio recordings from their relationship, apparently their therapist had actually asked them <laughs> to record each other following fights or something like that. So they could, I think they both wanted the other to remember what the other had said. You know. Yeah, and as Bailey commented on your, you you put that post about this on your yes. Facebook. I think Bailey commented something like, um, "If you're recording each other, your relationship's probably not doing so well." Probably get the <laughs> like fuck out of that relationship. Yeah, you, a, that's a good sign to get the fuck out. That's true. Although she said or talked to a therapist, I think maybe she didn't realize the therapist is the one who recommended them recording each other, right. which is what's kind of. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Know. Interesting. I, yeah, there were a few other recordings I think that weren't from that later on, mm. including um, I should mention this famous. So this one aside, there was another famous recording that somehow got out to TMZ of Johnny Depp slamming a bunch of cabinets and being like really angry and looking drunk and mm. filling up a big cup of wine and her kind of asking him like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then him noticing she's filming mm. kind of surreptitiously and then taking the phone and going, you, you know, you're doing this shit to me or something. And he like took mm. the phone. So that recording got leaked to... I'm saying leaked, but <laughs> we've actually find out how that recording got to TMZ. Yeah. But, you know, that made him look really bad. So that stuff that was out there and that was out in magazines. And again, there was this real picture of Johnny Depp being painted as a abusive wife beater, like the Sun newspaper had said. You know, on top of that, apparently there was like a $7 million divorce settlement mm -hmm. where he ended up giving $7 million to Amber Heard. And she had pledged to donate all $7 million, to splitting it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Even though I heard these, and I'll talk about these voice recordings and these audio recordings in a second, even though I heard those audio recordings, I kept thinking like, but she's pledging all of that money to these charities. What's in it for her? I don't understand. It looks like who wouldn't be telling the truth if they're giving all that money away? And despite these audio recordings, and I think partly because of <laughs> this uh, understanding what she was doing with that money, Johnny Depp actually lost the UK case, which further cemented in people's minds that, you know what? I guess he's a wife beater. <laughs> I didn't look into it too much more after that until now this most recent trial. And in this most recent trial, he's now suing Amber Heard herself, not a newspaper. For defamation. He's suing her for defamation. And it's, this is a hard one to prove because he's not just saying <laughs> that she- He has to prove that she's lying, that she knowingly lied about this. Maliciously. Yeah. yeah. But not just, he has to prove that that article that was published in her name was lying and not just that, but about him because it doesn't mention his name. So it's defamation by inference. It seemed almost impossible. So here are some of the, uh, let's just talk about first some of the things she had claimed. 
right? What did she say that, uh, do you recall some of the things that she said he had done? Josh, you're the expert here on this trial. I don't, okay, I don't remember. The I mean, she, <laughs> there were a bunch of things. Like she claimed that he was threatening her. Was it, he was going to cut her with a bottle or something? Turns out that she cut his finger. Whoa. I don't know. There's all these things where I know you have a way of going. I know. No, you're no, like, no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm not following it as closely. Like, yes, I followed some of it, but you know, there was that initial bruise that she claimed he hit her. Yeah, I mean, I know that you feel self-conscious when you are talking a lot, but I hand you the reins to go over the background of this story because you have literally been following it for years. I decided like a day or two ago that like, oh, everybody's following this. He won this defamation suit somehow. I should probably have some idea of what's going on. Yeah. So yes, please take us away. Okay. Okay. Tell us about all the things. For the record, I have not been following it for years to that degree. Like I said, I heard a little bit about it and I heard these audio recordings, which we'll get okay. to. So in this case, we got to watch, basically this judge allowed cameras into the courtroom. His side agreed to it. Her side did not. But, you know, she, I thought her side did agree to it as well. No, her side did not agree, didn't want the cameras in there. But courts are supposed to be public and it's up to a judge how public they're going to be, right? I thought that because I heard something that was saying that she they both had to agree to that. No, she didn't want they, her side did not want cameras in the room. But if one side does want them, mm. then that can happen. Are you so, sure? Yes. Are you 100 percent sure on that? I'm like 100 percent sure. OK, all right. The UK trial was not televised. All right. We'll just have to trust you for now. I'm very sure. Yes. Josh is probably correct. OK, if you're very sure, I trust you. Her side did not want cameras in the room. His side did. OK. And yeah, that's the public aspect of our court system. Again, it's very difficult to even get a defamation case or trial going. It took years to get this trial going. And then, of course, you know, she had to spend millions of dollars to defend herself, right? It's a lot of money. And he was suing her for $50 million, saying he lost potential work. He got dropped from Pirates of the Caribbean. He got dropped from Fantastic Beasts and replaced with Mads Mikkelsen, who again is a good actor, but still he got dropped from Warner Brothers and Disney projects and people probably weren't hiring him on things. He did a couple of tiny independent things, I think, since then, but his life really did get destroyed over these accusations. So it really matters. Were these accusations true? And she got up on the stand and she claimed she went through very, I'm going to say detailed stories, but detail might not be the best word considering it was the details sometimes were all over the place and didn't feel congruent. But she basically, she claimed that he beat her severely with chunky rings on his finger in the face, caused her black eyes, broken nose, busted lip, and he would beat her repeatedly throughout their relationship. She claimed that at one point he, and you know, just trigger warning here, sexually assaulted her with a bottle, possibly a broken bottle, penetrated her with a bottle, which it sounds absolutely insanely horrible. These are just like <laughs> some of the things. She claimed at one point he ripped out her hair, you know, choking, and he held her down. It'd be all kinds of horrible beating scenarios, right? The worst- Things that do happen to lots of people, by the way. Things that do happen, yes. Unfortunately. So very triggering things then yeah, to the very, yeah. people. Again, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm not the one who should be explaining this. I apologize. Oh, sorry. Well, um, okay. Do you want me to re-say what you just said so that it's a woman saying it? <laughs> I already said it, I guess. You already said it. It's just going to make it worse. <laughs> Let's yeah. just re-say. Mm -hmm. But again, that stuff, those are some hefty accusations, right? You should definitely take those accusations seriously, right? And so I knew like myself going into this trial, I'm going to take this stuff seriously. I'm not thinking, oh, she's lying. So here's the thing. I'm just going to read you just a, a few excerpts from these audio recordings that I've heard even back in the UK trial. Can you swallow so that whatever? I just swallowed, yeah. <laughs> uh, see if this squares with this, right? Because apparently he's a scary abuser. She said that she feared for her life mm. throughout the relationship, right? The narrative felt similar to what we've heard in the past of uh, mm -hmm. what abusers are like, right? She said he could be wonderful and charming one instance, and then, you know, he would drink and do drugs, and then he would turn into this monster who would become abusive, and it got worse over time. Now, for the record, there's no denying that Johnny Depp abused substances, mm. alcohol and drugs. In fact, he didn't deny this in court. <laughs> this is well known. So just pointing that out, he definitely did abuse substances. He definitely got drunk. He definitely got high. He definitely did cocaine and pills and everything. So here are some excerpts. Amber Heard, I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad I lose it. Amber Heard said that in an audio recording. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. If that were a dude saying that, it would be like, yeah. oh, obviously the abuser. Anyways, I know I'm jumping ahead. You have like a No, way. no, please, please. <laughs> no, it's okay. Here's another famous one. 
I'm sorry that I didn't hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched, Johnny interjects to say. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. She says, you didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I didn't hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I don't know if uh, you got from that excerpt there that maybe she hit him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I don't know if that was clear. Here's another one. I'm not bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. And Johnny says, because you start physical fights. And she continues, you are such a baby. Grow the fuck up. And he says again, because you start physical fights. And she says, I did start a physical fight. And he says, yeah, you did. So I had to get the fuck out of there. And she said, yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. You know what? You were admirable. Every single time, what happens? What happens? What's your excuse when there's not a physical fight? Then what's your excuse there? You're still being admirable, right? Just by running away. There's so many things to like yeah, say to about unpack each there. Thing. Yeah. I'll give you one more for now, right? Yeah. I'll give you one more. Well, maybe two more. We'll see. I'll throw this other one in there. I promise I won't explode if we just do the things a little different in the fight. Don't walk away from me. Do it in a different way. And I promise I won't resort to the same shit. I promise. Yeah. And here's a famous one. This is one of the biggest, most memorable ones. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them. Johnny Depp. I, a man, I'm a victim too of domestic violence and see how many people believe or side with you. Yeah. So these tell a bit of a different story. What kind of story does this tell you, Aya? Well, so there's a lot of things there. One is, and this was also clear in some of the testimony that it turned out that Johnny actually had separate places where he would go when they would get in a fight. So he would leave to get away. <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want him to, she wanted him to stay for a fight. That's is that like any abuse victim you've ever heard in your life trying to leave like that? No, no, or no. Tr her. Sorry, trying to make them stay trying no. to make your abuser stay no, no matter oh what it takes. No, not only is it obvious that he's not it's it's obvious that she kind of is. So just to be clear, he would like lock himself away in bathrooms or whatever. Yeah, and, she would and she would insist on coming in. chase after him. In fact, I think right. there was one story he told and again, it's backed up by audio recording evidence. Oh, and she like hits him with a door and stuff yeah he was like locking himself in a bathroom and he's trying to shut the door and she's trying to push her way in and they're struggling right he's trying to keep the door closed so he can stay locked in the bathroom yeah and she is trying to push it and apparently the door went over her toes like she stuck her foot there and it scraped over her toes and she goes ow my toes and then he instinctively bent down and it, you know suddenly stopped the whole thing to check her toes right oh are you okay and as soon as he did that she kicked the door into his head and knocked him back. And he said something like, what the fuck, right? And then punched him. And then she punched him in the face, in the jaw or something like that. Yeah, and it's... how do we know this is the case? On the audio recording, he's trying, he's going over it saying, this is what you did. And she's saying, no, no, no. When I, I promise you, when I kicked the door into your face, I, I didn't mean, I, that was, I just, I wasn't thinking, I'm sorry, that was an accident. He's like, okay, so that was an accident. But then when you punched me in the jaw, when you clocked me, as he likes to say in the jaw, what was that? She's like, oh, that, that was, Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I was just I was reacting. I was reacting. When I hit the door into your face, that was an accident. He's like, Okay, so that was an accident. But you hitting me in the jaw was not an accident. Yeah. She's like, I, I. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, and it becomes very clear, she couldn't control her anger. There's so many. Yeah. I, so not controlling her anger, denying what's actually happening. So very clearly, she's doing these things and then denying that what is clearly happening is actually happening. Yes, that's a very that's an abusive tactic to to say mm -hmm. that no that's not actually what it is that's gaslighting like what you call yeah exactly like gaslighting and it's also every time like when she like what we were saying before when she's trying to keep him there when she won't let him go away that's all control that's all like a need for control which is like that's never i don't i don't want to say never but that i don't think that is ever the trait of the abused person that's usually they're the one trying to get away or they're the one, yeah. you know, maybe they're trying to reconcile. Maybe they, they might be aggressive in retaliation. That is possible. Yeah. But in those instances, it doesn't sound like he was being, he wasn't the aggressor clearly didn't, yeah, at the very so, least. Right. We understand yeah. that he didn't initiate. In fact, she admits to initiating these fights right in the audio recording. Yeah. Now that bathroom one where we have audio recording evidence of, and I urge anybody, if they're just wondering, you know, do you guys know what you're talking about? Just listen to it. It's online. You can just listen to the recordings. They're out there. 
right? That was played in court before the jury. So what does Amber Heard have to say in response when that gets played? How does she describe what happened? She said she was trying to get away. Every time like they kind of revealed that she was hitting him or something, she'd be like, I was trying to get, I was always, I was just trying to get away from him. I just, I just want him to leave me alone. Oh, and she also was like, are you talking about the UK? Because at one point she goes like, he was always saying like clocked or like something. Like he's so yeah, dramatic about too. this. Like <laughs> She did say that too. I don't know which one you're referring to, but. Well, actually I was talking about this specific bathroom incident because she actually it's even more specific than that she will say no he was doing that to me i was trapped in the bathroom and he was trying to break oh, in yeah. and oh, do okay. this to me and right we just heard the audio recording it's like very clear yeah. <laughs> that it's one way and she's saying that's not what you heard this is what you heard hmm. and she's gaslighting the jury she's gaslighting the viewer at home it's amazing that people are going is that what i heard you listen to it again you're like that's not yeah but she sticks to that story so hard yeah. there's another there's like a big one that she talked talked about it's known as the staircase incident in their penthouse by the way these penthouses where they lived in downtown LA right next to where I used to work at LA cafe oh really right on like down the street you could have heard all this happening I delivered food I think around that time even I might have been working there cool. I delivered food to that building cool I might have even delivered to the penthouses before Josh you really are famous adjacent I famous adjacent yeah it's right there on Broadway it's called the Eastern Columbia building by the way this is where he and I mean, he had well, a- that's another thing. He had like multiple apartments in the penthouse and he would give them her family and her friends were brought there, which is also the opposite of what yes. usually abusers isolate and try to yes. cut you off yeah. from anyone who might support you or tell you what's going on. He moved in her and her friends and family. Total opposite. He owned his entire like floor, basically, yeah. of this building, right. the top floor of the penthouse, different penthouses. Mm. And he just moved her friends, a bunch of her friends, who, by the way, I should mention, are none of them are her friends anymore. Mm. She's burned all of those bridges somehow, right? Important to point out, none of them came to court to speak for her. Some of them came came over video deposition, Mm -hmm. some in the past, they were using past deposition, but they didn't come to court for her, which was interesting. Only person was her sister. And we'll get to that. And he moved her sister in as well to these penthouses. But anyway, the staircase incident, which they talked about. So here's what she described what happened on the stand, right? And there's a reason that I think she actually admitted to something in here is because there was evidence of this because there were actual witnesses. So Johnny Depp had his security guys. He had, uh, I don't know, talk about all the names, Travis McGivern, Ben something, and then Jerry Judge. The reason I'm bringing that up is Jerry Judge died Mm -hmm. sometime after. And one of the audio recordings, which we'll get to in a second. Has him in it. I can't give consent, so. Exactly. So there's an audio recording that proves she's lying about a bunch of things that we can hear, but the jury couldn't hear Mm. so maybe she's using it to win a case but once we at home know the truth of what she's lying about Mm. yeah you're gonna get a lot of people crapping all over her no pun intended on social media but back to this staircase incident she says she's arguing with him at the top of the stairs Mm. maybe across the stairs and her sister is there with her and johnny depp comes running up the stairs she says and hits her sister and she says something like don't you fucking touch my sister And she says he was about to push her sister down the stairs. So she had to punch him in the face. So she, at this point, punched Johnny Depp in the face. Everybody agrees this happened at the top of the stairs. And when she described this, by the way, she said, all I could think of was Kate Moss in the stairs. And I just swung at him. What she's referring to is this rumor that Johnny Depp in a previous relationship with Kate Moss had pushed her down the stairs. Mm. (laughs) Come back to that. And then what does she say he did? She says... He then grabbed me and started punching me in the face. He grabbed me by the hair and started beating me in the face repeatedly. Really, again, horrific stuff in front of apparently the sister and everyone. And then she had her sister testify to the same thing, pretty much. There were some differences, but Whitney Heard, well, now Whitney Henriquez, but Whitney Heard is Amber's sister. Basically the same thing. The sister got up on the stand and said, that's what happened. Again, that would sound like really damning testimony. Except in addition to backing up her sister's version of events, she then said after that, she went to go live on her boss's floor or something or in her boss's place Oh, okay. for a, a little while. Okay. She just kind of said that as a throwaway line. Like, yeah, then I went to stay on my boss's floor. Okay. Okay. Well, they got in touch with that boss. <laughs> Uh And that boss is a woman named Jennifer Howell. And in fact, she has a letter circulating around on the internet. Okay, You can look it up online. It's like a signed declaration. She submitted that as evidence, I think even in the UK trial and here, I don't think the actual letter is allowed. It might be considered hearsay. Mm. I think there is arguments over that, but they did have Jennifer Howell testify and basically said this letter that I wrote is 
what I wrote because mm. <laughs> the other side had tried to say, I don't know who wrote that, whatever. Mm. She said, I did write this letter and I just, there's someone I know and I love and I care for very much that being Whitney mm. is doing something very wrong. And I just want the truth to come out. That's what she could testify to at the trial, which you could watch. But you could also just go read this letter online. It's there right now. And she basically says that what happened was Whitney came and said, I can't live with Amber any longer because she had told her over a period of time, she went to go live with Jennifer for like up to a year at her place. And while there, you know, they- Because she couldn't live with Amber anymore? Because she was terrified of her sister, apparently. Because her sister Amber had abused her all her life. Oh, I didn't know any of this. You didn't know this? No. Yeah, so, oh my gosh, this letter, I almost want you to like stop this so you can take a look at this letter, but it's a long letter. I was Google, I was looking at Whitney Hurt because I didn't know anything about her. Like I said, I just heard bits and pieces still, uh, but okay. Yeah, I watched way too much of this. <laughs> no, it's okay. This letter is, um, you know, it won't be worth reading right now because it's kind of long. Oh. That's okay, I won't. I'll give you the rundown of it, basically. I'll just look at the highlights. You tell me what you want. She wrote this letter because Whitney came and stayed with her at her place. She's like, I'm that boss. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she's like, this not what she told me. Right after that incident, Whitney came to her and said, oh my God, Amber tried to kill Johnny. I, or I thought she was going to kill him. Oh, man. And I went up the stairs to try to stop her from attacking him. And then she, Amber, almost pushed me down the stairs. Oh. And that's what she had told Jennifer Howell, who has no horse in this race. Yeah. The only horse in this race is Whitney. She actually cares about Whitney and getting her out of that abusive situation with her sister. And she writes in this letter, this is what you told me had happened. You told me on plenty of occasions, you didn't know why Johnny was putting up with her abuse. You know, you said that Amber at one point had thrown a glass of wine at you in an elevator and attacked you in an elevator. And then there's another incident she attested to, which was that we remember, she's like me, it was like 20 other people in the office. Sorry, I should say Jennifer Howell was her boss at a charity called the Art of Elysium. Mm -hmm. And she worked at this nonprofit charity. She at one point, Whitney apparently stood up and said, oh, now she's fucking done it. She cut off his fucking finger. Mm -hmm. And this is alluding to the big incident a lot of people have heard about where Johnny Depp accused Amber Heard of throwing a vodka bottle at him in Australia and it severing the tip of his finger. And they had to get it like, I don't know, reattached or major surgery on that. Which by the way, he had a cast on during the time period, which they claim on that staircase incident, oh. where apparently he was holding her by the head and punching her in the face. With a cast on. Yeah, so changed it to, he grabbed her with the other hand and then was just with the hard cast, he was hitting her in the face. Now, even though- That would hurt. The way the cast worked is it wasn't a fist. Mm. The cast was like, it had his finger sticking out and it was like a very kind of delicate thing in that sense. But okay, mm. let's say that's possible even, right? Yeah, it would hurt. <laughs> she had uh, apparently severed his finger with his vodka bottle, which she on the stand had said that didn't happen. He actually cut it off himself. And there's like multiple yeah, right. versions. She said he cut it which off. He also was like, I'm a musician. I would never do that. And he like, how many people would really cut off their own? Like there are easier ways to like. Said he was on so many drugs and he was oh, high. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, she said that he did that. It wasn't totally unbelievable. Mm. Okay, this could be possible that he cut off his own finger. But... It could be, you know, and what is she saying? He cut it off himself, you know, drugs, you know, alcohol. Right. Maybe he did this. And it was attested to that afterwards. And he even said this himself. It was the closest he felt to a nervous breakdown mm. after. And he started doing some crazy stuff. He started like with the his finger that was left. He, he like dipped it in paint or something. He started drawing, oh. writing what? in blood or writing stuff on the mirrors. He kind of just went kind of crazy after this. Yeah. But anyway, she said that either, I don't know, she gave it like a bunch of different events. She said he did it by smashing a phone or maybe he cut it off with something sharp or a knife or maybe it was done in these accordion doors which I think what he told the doctor later mm. he says he didn't want to tell people that she had cut his finger off to protect her mm. so he didn't tell people that and so you know they brought in experts you know to say on his side of course it's possible and her side I don't think it's possible and they had experts uh, supposedly on each side saying is it possible that a bottle would sever a finger like that well you can listen to the Australia audio and be all but certain that is what happened because you can hear her following that incident apparently she's recording it too she recorded a lot of these she has very little self-awareness it's very weird how she comes off. Yeah. yeah she was like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i just want to see him i just want to see him and they're just trying to get her away after what happened to him she's like a 
you know, clearly thinks she did something wrong. She wasn't saying, hey, he just raped me with a bottle, which is what she's telling everybody else in court now is what happened. There's no talk of that on the recording or anything like that. It's all about what she did to him and him needing medical attention, right? Mm -hmm. For what she claimed would need medical attention too, but Mm -hmm. she never got any sort of medical attention. Anyway, you could read about that, but that wasn't allowed for the jury. Why? Because Jerry Judge, that security guy died. So he couldn't consent, I guess. I will say there are some things and I know we'll get to this, but just in case we like things like she didn't go to get medical attention. I mean, that stuff does happen. Sometimes someone is just like, there are so many things like that just to keep in mind during this, which will come back to, I'm sure. But okay, here's where, yes, and you're absolutely right about that, of course. And that's what the other side was arguing. Here's the problem with that. She didn't claim, she claimed, first of all, the most severe types of abuse. Like, again, big, huge, chunky rings on his finger, beating me in the face, black eyes, broken nose, busted lip, ripping out hair, all this stuff, right? Stuff that might actually, you know, raped with a broken bottle, like, you know what I mean? Stuff that would likely require medical attention, right? Okay, maybe for some reason she would heal and didn't require that. There are pictures of her the next day looking totally fine. Right, that's the photo shoot that they had? There's not just one, multiple times. Right, okay. After that restraining order she got, where she said that he threw the thing at her? Yeah, I mean, that whole bruise thing, a bruise can very easily be covered up by makeup. I don't really, that part- It's not that. Okay. It's not just a bruise can be covered up by makeup. It's and it. This was, so she went six days later after he went on tour to Europe. So, okay, this is another, I'll talk about this right now. I was just saying the the severing of the finger, Mm -hmm. Jennifer Howell attested to that also being the case. And you're right, of course, that people sometimes don't seek medical attention. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of cases of pictures of her, like her going on the James Corden show the day after saying she was severely beaten in the face. It's not just covering up like broken nose. That's not just the bruise. Yeah, no. Uh, Like you can't just cover that up easily with makeup. Mm -hmm. As far as I understand, you tell me. No, I agree. No, I'm just swelling. I'm just saying like there is some plot, like there are some things where it's like, yeah, Yeah. She could have had makeup on. Yeah. They played on that plausibility a little bit. But here's the thing. When she went and got that TRO and walked in with that bruise on her face, it was six days after Johnny had left mm. Okay. on tour. So he wasn't, it's not like he did this the day before. And in those six days, I think you watched that testimony by Isaac Baruch, right? Mm-hmm. Who saw her basically almost every one of those days. Mm. And his, he was like, she didn't have any makeup on as far as, and then they kind of tried to ask him, are you sure she well, didn't have makeup on and all that stuff? I mean, I kind of agreed with them on, I don't think yeah. they did a great job, but I do agree that like men never know when women are wearing makeup. Kind of, she'd known him for, he'd seen her with and without makeup for years though. That she, he lived in the same building. So he was one of those people that okay. this guy was a friend of Johnny Depp's. He let him live in one of the penthouses as well. So it was like her and her friends and her sister. And then him, he basically let him live there to do his artwork and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, he even said like, do I know for a fact that she was not? Not wearing makeup no right to him he's very certain of the fact there was nothing on her face she was laughing and giggling with her friends every day looked like she'd just gotten up a bunch of those times and then six days later she walks in with her publicist and this new bruise on her face to the courthouse and then of course she testifies to everybody that it's like why did you bring your publicist well just in case something was going to happen but you know she's also my friend i didn't expect there to be any sort of media i just wanted to be quiet about it they proved on the stand They brought in this guy from TMZ who basically testified to the fact that she had alerted TMZ. In fact, she even made the mistake herself in a previous testimony in the UK and accidentally said that TMZ was alerted beforehand. There's like a funny video of that where she like stops herself once she realizes she accidentally said it. Mm. So she had apparently alerted TMZ about this bruise and they knew exactly how and where to photograph her on what angle and what side of her face and she was going to pause for the picture. So she very much set up this fact and put it out at TMZ to make a big deal about it. It was all very, very fishy. To me, the photo stuff, like that's a lot less than the recordings for me are kind of the the key because like you can see what their relationship is. All of the stuff that she says is like the stuff that no domestic abuse victim said ever. Like, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to say there's no perfect victim. There's no of course specific way you should act. Like even the things like, oh yeah, she was laughing with her friends the next day. Like, yeah, sometimes you go through something traumatic and you don't act the same way afterwards. So I don't like, I know that that's part of a bigger story, but like sometimes I just want to point out that those things on their own are not necessarily indicative of not. That's exactly it. Any of these things on their own, I think you could say, well, maybe this, well, maybe that. 
Yeah. You never know how someone's going to respond. Exactly. I would be like, I'd probably be like laughing, trying to forget about what happened. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But like, yes, you never know how someone is going to react to those sorts of things. Yeah. Men don't know. Yeah. Me. No, it's not because she was laughing. Sorry. I was just, I was trying no, to describe I, this I know. thing that this guy. I'm just so. saying like, that's a kind of a classic, like, oh, they weren't acting the way you would expect them to act after. Well, people don't necessarily act the way you would expect them to act after things like that. You don't know. That's true. That's true. And again, any of these things taken in isolation, maybe even a couple of these things, you go, okay, maybe there's an explanation. Mm -hmm. But there's so right. yeah. much evidence no, on every 100%. single angle. She has yeah. basically zero evidence. All the And she took lots and lots of pictures, by the way, throughout the relationship. Anytime she could take a picture of something, it seemed that she did, right? She has pictures of him passed out and all kinds right. of Right, that's why it seems positions. crazy that there isn't one of like her crazy beaten face like that. No, it's true. It's, yeah. it's kind of, it's unbelievable. And again, maybe that would be explainable. But on top of everything and the recordings and the fact that she alerted TMZ, all these things, mm -hmm. you start to get a picture and then when you see her on the stand you know she's extremely unbelievable when she's talking right she is she makes a very unsympathetic unlikable person when she's talking like everything she does but why do you think that is as a potential abuse victim why would one say well, that so she seems she just doesn't seem genuine everything she does um first of all she makes like really intense eye contact while she's talking about things that are very traumatic. Again, you never know how someone is going to be about something. Maybe it's far enough away that she can, but that is not, usually that's like an internal feeling that people will be focused on their own feelings where she looks like she's trying to, she looks really like she's trying to act. And I would, this is obviously a joke, but like the most surprising thing about this whole thing is that she ever got any jobs as an she's actress. She's an actress. No, I'm just she kidding. She didn't but like, seem like a good actress on the stand. She seemed like she was taking bits and pieces of real stories that real women go th that I mean, she's a real person, but like that real, real survivors of abuse. survivors go through and dramatizing them in a way that she thought that she should in order to garner some kind of sympathy. It felt like a bunch of cliches or not cliche, but it felt Very like a much. bunch no, of no, it felt like, like things you've read about this kind of strung yeah. together or something, you know, or that you watch. It felt like a hyper, hyper emotional script in a drama about this, whereas it wasn't based on a real thing. Like she didn't, the way that she remembered things was not generally the way that people. And again, like there are so many variations and it's kind of a slippery slope because you don't want to say that, you know, they should be, this is how a survivor of domestic abuse should be exactly. telling their story. We're just talking statistically. But the way that she tells it is just so like, okay. So just from a personal perspective, I'm a very, I'm an overly empathetic person. Sometimes I sound like a dick when I say that, but like, of course you are. basically like I, I have a hard time watching someone cry or like watching someone do something like that without feeling those. Moments. And you felt nothing for her, right? I actually, I did feel something. I felt disgust Pity. or disgust. Sorry. That's not what I, I felt. Mean. Disgust. <laughs> yeah. I felt like but that's even worse. No, you're right. You, I know what you meant. Yeah. Like, is that you felt nothing. I didn't feel nothing. I felt nothing sympathetic towards her. You're not the only one who said this. I actually I read felt disgusted by what she was doing because it was like it was so cringy and uncomfortable to watch someone lie about something yeah. that people I mean it felt like she was lying about something that people really go through and that she's just making a mockery of something that so many people go through yeah I'm saying I read this comment yeah by a bunch of people like I saw a lot of comments on social media, again these mm -hmm. supposed toxic Johnny Depp fans uh, people saying I'm a survivor of domestic abuse I went through horrible things Mm -hmm. And I am an extremely empathetic person. Right. And I felt nothing watching her testimony. Right. I felt like this is all an act. It's a performance. A performance. Exactly. And yeah. I was disgusted that she claims to speak for me. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who came out to say that. Well, I definitely echo that. And and I mean, I, I'm not an expert again, but like I've heard a lot of, you know, I work on the crisis line. Sometimes I'm talking to people who are talking about something that happened years ago. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're angry. Sometimes they're different things. But just I've never heard someone talk the way she does. And it's yeah. just like on a very human level, I think we have a sense of when someone is very clearly trying to misrepresent themselves or trying to garner sympathy. And there's a reason we all kind of feel like this cringe, this inward cringe. It was sociopathic. It felt like someone yeah. trying to imitate human emotion because she didn't have any of her own. And yeah, there was, I mean, it's not like it's impossible. Her uh, acting coach actually testified. I don't know if you saw this at all. Oh, I didn't see that, no. It was actually for her side, just to say that, you know, she'd come in crying sometimes, you know, about stuff going on. Mm -hmm. But the thing that everybody took away from this testimony, which was supposed to help her, was the acting coach had said, 
you know, it was interesting when she came in crying because the truth is, as an actor, that's the thing she struggled with the most is that she actually struggled to actually cry or produce tears when she was acting. Oh, but then, so he's trying to suggest that she actually had real tears. Well, she's saying that there were times when she did cry. And I believe that, you know, there's times when she came and showed up crying about something, right? Yeah. Uh, Being upset about something. The thing is on the stand, not a single tear. It felt like someone trying to cry, like pretending Mm. to cry. And you could tell because every time there was an objection, her emotion just sort of shifted. And it's not that we're saying like abuse victims should always be emotional on the stand. Like you could be whatever. It's more like a human being has a certain way of- There's a certain consistency to people's emotions, right? Right. And they don't just, she would go through like eight different emotions on her face all at once. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't normal. It wasn't realistic. It felt like someone- and scanning and searching the people like the jury mm-hmm. she constantly looked out she always answered every question oh my god how annoying can i just scan yeah. to see if what Ugh. their reactions were it was so annoying i know this is so pe- like i already i'm gonna sound like i, I don't care about johnny depp like if he's a just admit user, that you I, care i don't i really <laughs> no, I don't I now I as a, if i were like 14 15 i would have been like no not johnny but no <laughs> every time they would say something she'd be like that is correct or that is incorrect. She would look at the lawyer and just to say the one word, she would look at the jury. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, you're making it so obvious that everything you do is a performance. Yes. And it's just so bad. You are told like often to like- To talk to the over jury. and talk to the jury. But she took that- but the way she did it was Really, just, literally, right? It's really uncomfortable to watch. And not in like a, oh, I feel, oh, she went through something terrible. It's more just like, what, what is- do you have an ounce of self-awareness of how you come off to other people? Like, <laughs> apparently not. Like maybe being hot didn't help you in life because you think <laughs> that you can get away with everything. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> here's the thing. There was a forensic psychologist who I, testified yeah, I on, the actually there was two that testified on either side, but mm-hmm. one on Depp's side actually personally evaluated her. Mm-hmm. No actual, uh, by the way, psychologist got to evaluate Johnny Depp because he didn't claim any sort of psychological damage after what happened, right? Whereas she had a counterclaim for $100 million mm-hmm. saying that the statements by Johnny Depp's lawyer through him defamed her, mm-hmm. saying basically you lied about saying that I lied. Uh, so much legal bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, basically, well. <laughs> <laughs> but because she claimed PTSD in that counterclaim, that right, means that right, they right. were able to have they a have psychologist to. evaluate her. And this psychologist said she diagnosed Amber Heard with borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. Now, if you recall, and this is one of the reasons I think that I was so invested in this case, one of the reasons, I have a whole feature anthology movie out there called the Cluster B Quadrilogy. Basically, it's comprised of four short films about the four Cluster B disorders. Psychopath for a Day for Antisocial Personality Disorder, Borderline Bill, Borderline Personality Disorder, Attention Horror for Histrionic Personality Disorder, and Nick the Narcissist for Narcissistic Personality Disorder. That's two out of the four right there that she just yeah. diagnosed Amber Heard with. And a lot of people don't know about those as much. Those are the lesser known cluster B disorders, especially. I mean, they have, they already kind of have a stigma. And I think like part of what I didn't like about using that forensic psychologist coming in and saying she has these problems was a bit like that's often used as a weapon. And I think someone said this to you. That's often used against victims or survivors of, yeah. of abuse to say like- Why should anyone believe you? Because you're dealing with a mental disorder or something. You're all these things. And Borderline already has like a lot of negative associations. And she's not doing these things because she has these issues if she does. like. I mean, well, that's not necessarily true because sometimes these disorders do- well, how do you say it's chicken or the egg, right? They cause behavior. Does it matter that she has these things? I don't know how much it matters. I, I feel think like it, I think it does matter in describing her behavior. I think what matters is the way that she behaved makes it very clear that she's abusive. I don't know that it matters that she has. Uh, I mean, she's clearly like a narcissist. I don't know that it matters so, that she has all these disorders. You're saying it's clear that she's a narcissist, right? A narcissist is one of those cluster B disorders, right? Okay. But they're not saying narcissist. They're saying borderline okay, and histrionic. Now, I think you're right to call out the fact that there's a stigma towards these disorders. And I didn't do a very good job of that. I think when I made like a post about all this stuff, and I was being very analytical about things. And, you know, there are people out there with borderline personality disorder, lots of people who have been diagnosed with this personality disorder, who are wonderful, great people wouldn't hurt a fly. They struggle every day with the 
And we should talk about what that is, right? Borderline personality disorder is a disorder where it's kind of characterized by this unstable sense of self, Mm -hmm. like really not really sense of identity, not knowing really who you are. And also this irrational, intense fear of abandonment. Right. And you do see that in the recordings and stuff, I guess. Yes. Yeah. The fact that she doesn't want to let him leave or go, right? Like she sees abandonment in everything, right? And sometimes if you're in a relationship with someone with this disorder, you'll find that it can be a struggle because you can get and it's also a these severe shifts in mood it's kind of like bipolar but bipolar is a mood disorder it's a little it's a bit different this rapidly shifting moods it really quickly really quickly like within moments of each other and yes amber heard seemed to display this behavior and then there's histrionic personality disorder which is kind of it's not as easy to describe right here but it's marked by this kind of shallowness and exaggerating events and things that happened. Part of it's also using your kind of like sex appeal to get things and stuff. These are things people could do. So I'm not saying that means you have the disorder, but there's like to a certain degree that it becomes a disorder. I'd say histrionic personality disorder has a little more psychopathy involved. In fact, so does narcissistic and antisocial. Sometimes I feel like it's unfair. I meant narcissist. Sorry, I meant narcissist in like the pop culture way. I didn't know. I'm not diagnosing her. Well, that's one of the disorders. I mean, that's what people are referring to in the same sense, right? I do think sometimes it's a little unfair to rope borderline in there, even though I think, I mean, there's obviously some toxic behavior that people have to work on. Is that uh, when people that have, have empathy and stuff? That's right? the like, thing. still empathetic people. Yes. I think borderline personality disorder still has empathy, emotional empathy. Right. Whereas like narcissists, psychopaths and antisocial and histrionic Histrionic. yeah there's a lot less empathy do they have do they have a sense of other people's well especially i mean antisocial base very much not so narcissistic you know it's all about me 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 Mm. and histrionic's also like about me 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 yeah so borderline gets roped in there but i think it's important then to say like people with these disorders especially borderline i would say just having the disorder doesn't make you a villain automatically i do think though that it's important to point out that it does describe her behavior and you can understand Mm. better her behavior that comes from these disorders. Mm. She's still making her choices though. And she doesn't seem to show any self-awareness. If you have a disorder like that, but you have self-awareness, you can monitor yourself and build better habits Mm. and you can get better. So you're right. It's not, we don't want to demonize people with the disorders just for having the disorder, right? It's about what you do. Mm -hmm. Well, she went and Amber Heard went and did some horrible things. And, you know, having two of them also increases the risk you have even more toxic behaviors, right? Mm. Again, this person did diagnose her in a relatively short period of time. So it's up to us and the jury to say, does this seem to match her behavior or not? She had a psychologist on her side try to say that she had PTSD and didn't have these disorders. Well, Mm. one of them is going to be more right than the other. Mm. And judging from the behavior we saw, I think we could tell which was more accurate. Yeah. There was a reason I brought that. Why did I bring up the borderline thing? Because you were saying... um, Sometimes mental health issues are used as kind of a way to discredit abuse survivors and their testimony. Like they're fucking crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. Look, they have all these things who can trust their testimony they don't even right like things like that yeah obviously so i do apologize to people if i sounded and not just here but in my no i'm not saying that you i was just pointing it out so that people are aware look my dad's a forensic psychologist as well right and i grew up learning all about these disorders and i would speak in a kind of analytical way about the negative sides of them and sometimes forget that you know there's real people struggling and suffering every day with these disorders people who haven't hurt anybody or people who are working really hard on themselves and just relegating them to this disorder isn't fair okay right people aren't their disorder necessarily right i still think it's useful to bring up but we should bring up the caveats Mm -hmm. because as this one person told me and she called me out for it she said like we don't claim amber heard (laughs) like i agree with your assessment (laughs) on this trial but like borderlines we don't claim her she's not us yeah we don't want her Mm -hmm. nobody wants yeah. Nobody wants her. <laughs> that sounds, I mean, again, we're not saying every abuse victim acts the same way or anything like that, right? Everybody could be different. Yeah. But there are statistical things that are like, let's look at abuse perpetrators, right? Perpetrators of abuse. There are certain things they tend to have in common. It's not always the case, but tend to be the case, right? One of them is there's a history of abuse. Mm -hmm. And she has the history with her sister. She has. No, interestingly, Amber Heard has history, not just with her sister, by the way, her former wife, technically, Tasha Van Rie. She got arrested for domestic violence against her former wife in an airport. Oh, yeah. I I didn't even hear about that, but that makes... Yeah, the person who saw that actually testified to it as well. Okay. She did get arrested. And at a time, her partner said, just drop the charges. It's not what you think. But she got arrested for it. And people saw the abuse happen Mm. publicly. 
but Johnny Depp, he has, I think he's been arrested for like trashing hotel rooms or stuff in the yeah, past. Yeah, he has lots of like... And again, it's important to point out that Johnny Depp is no saint in the sense that, no. again, substance abuse issues, apparently some rage issues. He's been known to sometimes have jealousy issues that people have talked about. Mm -hmm. But then we say there's no such thing as a perfect victim. We often talk about women. Well, I think that goes for men too. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a perfect victim. And I do think Johnny Depp's the victim here, but... Has Johnny Depp ever assaulted or abused a woman in the past? And he's had lots of girlfriends and partners. It, oh, yeah. Moss, Sherilyn Fenn, Vanessa Parody. Yeah, Vanessa Parody, Winona Ryder. Did you say some of them had come forward in defense of him? Most, a bunch of them. Vanessa Parody came, Winona Ryder came in defense. Okay. I think Sherilyn Fenn did from way back when. I don't know. On Amber Heard's side, they had a former fling of his was Ellen Barkin. Okay. Testified that they were briefly seeing each other. And it was actually for Amber's side. She pointed out that Johnny Depp was drunk and high a lot and that he once threw a bottle across a room mm. in like an argument with some friends. Mm. Not at her, just near her. Oh, okay. Well, he has like rage issues. Like it's like the cabinets that you watch him like. Yeah. You know, I mean, apparently that was the day he found out that his business manager had been like stealing $600 million from her or some amounts of, mm. I don't know. People have reasons to get mad in our lives we've all been mad at various points right yeah. and if you're a public figure people tend to know about it more i'm not justifying it i'm just saying you know again he's not a perfect victim if he is the victim let's back up for a second i'm glad that you went over that stuff so we've kind of gone over let's say we're considering this as a case study part of me kind of again like i pointed out i'm always like uh why is our case study about like a woman who's lying Probably, most likely lying. But let's back up a bit and just do kind of what is abuse or what is domestic abuse and just talk about what that looks like a little bit and then come back and forth with examples of what you just went through. That sound okay? Yes, because especially, I think you are in a position to talk about this too, because like you said, you worked at the women's shelter, was it? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's the women's shelter. It was the sexual assault center and the women's shelter combined into one thing. So yeah, it, it's, still, it's the women's so shelter. you interacted with women who had suffered domestic violence. Yeah, and I had training on how to deal like with how to develop a safety plan. When is the most you know dangerous time, which is when they're trying to leave, right? And different kind of ideas about that are different. Yeah, I have some training. <laughs> But again, no expert, but I think that's clear. See, now that when you start talking about things now, it's getting real professional. When I talked about it, I'm like a guy gossiping about celebrities. Well, no, <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, I think talking about it in only one way or the other can, mm -hmm. I think it's good to combine those. It's good to combine no, those because it brings good. like a real yes. thing to what is otherwise yeah. No, that's the whole purpose here. And I want to say that the reason I wanted to go into all these details of the case is one, I mean, I followed it so deeply. I wanted to share I know. what I followed. And to me, it was like a shock and a surprise to be like, oh my God, I think, I think this woman's lying. Like, yeah, I didn't believe she was lying. I don't believe women are lying, you know, generally when they make these claims. I don't think it's right to assume that someone's lying about stuff like that. Mm. But when someone is and when there's really hard evidence of it, mm -hmm. I think we do need to call that out. We can talk about that more. Yeah. But yeah, Johnny Depp ended up winning this case. I just want to say he. Right. Yeah. All three counts of defamation. They awarded him 10 million compensatory damages and 5 million punitive, which means they found her to be malicious in her lies, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, it seemed kind of like a token award for her. They awarded her 2 million in one of her accounts of defamation towards him, saying that his lawyer lied about the way one of the lies happened mm. and the way he said it was a hoax. And then I guess through his lawyer, they're saying it's him. So they awarded her 2 million. I don't know if anybody who's following. It's like pocket change to these people. But yeah. <laughs> well, 15 million to two. Technically, it wasn't 15 million because in Virginia, I think there's a statutory like limit to punitive damages. So it was only 350,000. So we made 10.35 million from her. Take away 2 million, 8.35 million she owes. That's like more than she's worth, apparently. So now it's like, how is she going to? I mean, to be honest, I think he cared more about clearing his name than any of that. Yes, that's what they're saying. He did care more about it. But technically, if he wants yeah. to collect on her, yeah. she could be owing him for life because yeah. she may never work again. And some people feel bad about that. I don't mm. I don't know that I feel bad about that. Mm. I mean, maybe you shouldn't 
do what she did. Yeah. So I'm going to start with a definition from UN.org. What is domestic abuse? I know this is very textbook, Josh, but I think it's important that we please make this a more professional podcast. Well, no, I'm just I'm going to read for a second. So domestic abuse, also called domestic violence or intimate partner violence, can be defined as a pattern of behavior in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power and control over an intimate partner. Abuse is physical, sexual, emotional, economic, or psychological actions or threats of actions that influence another person. This includes any behaviors that frighten, intimidate, terrorize, manipulate, hurt, humiliate, blame, injure, or wound someone. Domestic abuse can happen to anyone of any race, age, sexual orientation, religion, or gender. What? Big surprise to a lot of people. Somehow. Any gender? The, I know, right? I know. It can occur within a range of relationships, including couples who are married, living together, dating, and it affects people of all socioeconomic backgrounds and education levels. And victims of domestic abuse can also include a child or other relative or any other household member. Basically just in like a household situation, right? In a household situation, right? Yeah. I mean, it's often intimate partner violence or domestic violence, but there is, you know, children are involved in that and often also the victims. You just point at me. I just pointed at you. (laughs) Just say like you, Josh. Like you josh yeah but anyone can be a victim i don't know why it was such a surprise to people that a man can be a victim it was a real well it's not just a surprise some people just don't i don't get it that's the thing i'm trying to figure out why wouldn't i think because if you have to accept that men can be it does open up more to use one of your favorite words josh it opens up more nuance it means that you have to look at every situation yeah and it is more comforting to believe women or maybe it's more comforting to people to say like it's always women who are victims or survivors of abuse and men suck and that's it's just it's a lot easier because look at how much they had to look at to figure out who was the abuser in the situation, and right? And still there's people who won't believe it despite the evidence. And still, it's hard. So I think it's hard for people to have to consider each situation differently. And I mean, we've worked so hard for things like, I mean, we, but like, as a society, we've finally gotten to the point where women are getting a little bit less afraid to open up about things like that, right? So, I mean, there's still lots of people who don't want to come forward with something because, and I remember like so many conversations, but I remember this one conversation where this woman had to go through, you know, all this court stuff. And she was like, I, I can't go there again. I can't listen to this guy talk about what I was wearing that day or like what I, I just, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I just remember like, that's so common for people who are going through the court process of trying to prosecute an abuser so many times it happened like nothing happens because they don't want to go through all of that and it's been getting better it's been getting a little bit more like okay we should believe women and all this stuff me too movement and then fucking like this chick comes out like uh, the Me Too movement. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of like, what's going to happen to the Me Too movement after this? Yeah. And how did that come about, by the way? The Me Too movement? Hashtag Me Too. Hashtag Me Too. Someone said like, Me Too. This happened to Me Too. I think it was like Alyssa Milano or someone said that she, you know, hashtag Me Too, like this happened to Me Too. It started and, something, and right? women started coming out saying like, yeah, this happened to Me Too. And then Harvey Weinstein was the big one, I think, in Hollywood. Harvey Weinstein was a big one. I think Bill Cosby came Bill first. Bill Cosby. But then retroactively now we're like going, yes, that's part of the Me Too Mm. renaissance or whatever you call it yeah yeah and a lot of like very powerful older men that like have been going through all of this and people knew about it's like an open secret that are using their power and privilege yeah and taking advantage of women in various industries because men have historically had such positions of power and influence exactly yeah and part of the fear with this is like you said at the beginning, it was very unlikely that Depp would win this. Yeah. Like it's a defamation suit. There's so much that they had to prove. And he lost in the UK trial. And he lo- had already lost in the UK trial. So part of the fear is that more defamation suits or even the threat of more defamation suits like this coming out against women who are coming forward means that less women will come forward because they might be the next Amber Heard. They might be put on the stand like this and mocked by everybody online. When you say the next Amber Heard, you mean it in terms of the mocking, not in terms of they might be lying about their no i mean in terms of the mocking like i mean if this really is she's getting mocked crazily online and people are saying that's kind of bad she's getting mocked do you think it's bad that she's getting mocked I don't really like the mocking. I think that it's clear that she, and I mean, I kind of said on my own, like, it's so clear that she's lying and it's disgusting and all this stuff. Do you think there's an extra layer of woman hatred in there? Yeah. Yeah. I had a hard time. Anything that had already like something written, like, look at her face and she does this. I found that more upsetting almost (sighs) because it was like, she sucks, but you are finding her like, she's like an 
easy target for people who already hate women to be like, look at this bitch. Like, and you're wondering if that's where it might be coming from sometimes, right? Yeah. I mean, I should add, we didn't even bring this up. This is maybe it's good we didn't bring it up earlier because it's okay. kind of been everywhere. But, you know, one of those hashtags is hashtag Amber Turd because I mean, this is that's all just stupid Johnny te- Depp, cheap shots. Like, well, it's because Johnny Depp. I know because she shot on his bed or whatever. Yeah. yeah apparently, yeah. according to Johnny Depp, she, he did that. And there is a witness who said she's talked about that. I guess that's less proven. Yeah. So she sucks. Some people suck. Like people, women can be monsters too. Like we said, like, why is that so surprising to people? It's still, I know that it's hard to look away from the trial, but it still annoys me how fascinating everyone finds like, oh my God, this woman's lying and she's actually the abusive one. You don't find, you don't know why that's, does it happen a lot that someone's lying? I don't know why that's fascinating to people. It's not, I don't think, I think it's fascinating. I think it's upsetting, but I don't think she deserves. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that because I think it's fascinating. I don't, fascinating may not be the right word, but the fact that someone on that, to that level ruined and it's not just anybody, but he is like a big star, right? She brought him down with this accusations that turned out not to be true. That's a huge thing that doesn't happen every day that we know about at least, right? And and yes, there is a fear that people are going to think that's the case when it isn't the case, because it's usually not the case, right? It's usually if a woman's saying that it's True. It's not even just what people will think. It's what women who haven't come forward or women who are considering coming forward might feel. They might be afraid to now. Might be afraid to now. And just like. But whose fault is that? What do you mean? Whose fault is that? It's the. No, I mean. It's more like I think that what Amber did. Is it Johnny Depp's fault? No, no, it's not Johnny Depp's fault. Is it these people who are mocking her? I mean, I think the people who are mocking her, I get it. I understand why they would, but I don't think that it's helpful. I think she should be dismissed more than anything. I don't think it should be because now that there's so much attention. on, You don't think there should be an anger? You don't think people should be angry? There should be anger. Yeah, we should be like, we don't associate with her. She's not part of- Well, that's how the internet deals when they're angry. Like, look, I remember all the mocking of Kevin Spacey and Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein. There were memes about him constantly everywhere. Like, I think people are acting like this is just happening to Amber Heard. But the thing is, those guys were called out for their abuse. She's being called out for two things. One, her abuse of him. And two- her falsely accusing him of abusing her. So it's like extra bad. You yeah, know? you know, I don't know. Maybe it's also just like the light tone, like look at this stupid girl, but it's like, this is a big issue and you're just treating it like some attention whore. Oh. <laughs> Which, <laughs> which I should, by the way, someone called me out on this. My movie that's called Attention Whore, the Histrionic Personality Disorder. It's not that I'm saying if you have a disorder, I'm calling you an attention whore. Like that's the dark comedy that's inherent in the movie. I, I tell my stories with the tinge of dark comedy. I wasn't criticizing your attention whore. Actually, but I just want to say that. I actually, while watching her was like, mm, I could see like, she does have some similarities to that My character to that character actually yeah so i mean i wasn't i don't want to like feed your ego but uh yeah no it wasn't so bad <laughs> also you're saying that i captured the, the disorder as well i think you screen? did ca- oh. maybe if she does have histrionic yeah yeah i think you did <laughs> i mean i made that before you know the amber heard stuff came out so you did yeah but then again look i have a dark sense of humor about things a lot of the internet has a dark sense of humor too and they deal with heavy stuff like that basically with dark humor and they want to punish People want to punish that level of kind of what they perceive to be evil, right? And I do think there's a lot of evil in- There is. Like at least a total lack of empathy and trying to use a movement like the Me Too movement for your own gain. No, I know. For your own personal gain. And it- I know, but it's also like, it's so easy. Like, where's the line between making fun of her and just making fun of- like why, why, I guess that's how people deal with things. I just, I still don't like it. Like I, I mean, you want the internet to be better. I get it. And maybe the internet's still really misogynistic too. And- I just want people to like still realize that when they say stuff like that, someone who doesn't know every single tiny thing about the case just sees that, which like, who has the time, Josh, to like follow every <laughs> single thing. And all they see- I didn't mean to, okay. Is a woman being just mocked and yeah, she sucks. I agree. And I think that she personally deserves to be mocked, but I think that the culture of mocking her is just making a lot of people feel like they maybe they shouldn't come forward or it might, it might. I mean, like, yeah, again, I think we should cut her off just like that BPD, like the um, by borderline borderline personality disorder. You said someone said like, we don't claim Amber Heard, like we have nothing to do. We don't with claim her. We yeah. don't claim her. Same with the Me Too movement. Like we don't like we don't claim, but people have to say that, right? 
I do think that out there, it's not quite being said to that level, mm -hmm. especially in the media. You're not hearing people say she lied and we don't claim her. Right. You're saying, look, I think they're blaming Johnny Depp and they're blaming his fans and stuff like oh. that for so that's his problem. That's what I'm saying. That's definitely a problem. When really, shouldn't you be blaming Amber Heard? You definitely should. For damaging the movement. When someone abuses and abuses, not just him, but abuses the movement yeah. and co-ops it for your own like gain in that sense and of course, you lack yes. total yes. empathy, isn't she her? the movement herself no it's true and i think it's like very strange and like very weird for people to be still after seeing like for reporters or journalists who are supposed to actually look into things to say you know that it's just the fans and all of that that are affecting all of this i think that's a bit well it's also like what about all the men who didn't i, I know i'm talking mainly about the women and yeah like usually like we said, like domestic abuse victims and by victims, I mean, someone who, who died, right? Not a survivor, like someone who was murdered for that. They're usually women, Yes, but it doesn't mean that there aren't tons of survivors out there who are men. Yeah. And there are, there's a power imbalance though, between men and women that should be acknowledged, at least a physical yes. power imbalance. Yeah. Right. Although something, I think I read too, that women are more likely to use weapons because of when they <laughs> the abuse too, because of that imbalance. So sometimes you do see more because our hands are like too little and dainty. Sometimes you do see more murders happening one way than just, mm. I don't know. I read something okay, about well, that. But, I don't know where, where you But yes, in general, as the statistics show, yeah. of course, it leans more in the direction of men abusing women. But there's a few things that should be noted, right? I mean, one, yes, that should be taken very seriously. But also statistics tell you the general trends of things. You can't look at a single case and look at the statistics and say, this can't be possible because it's unlikely totally yeah, no, because but, of the statistics yeah. being veered towards one way. You have to look at the evidence and facts of a case. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But also how many men are actually reporting their abusive situations? Well, yeah. So they're, they're one of the quotes that you said, I think really like, and I remember hearing that and thinking like, oh my God. So she even says like, Oh, are you going to tell, and you, you read this earlier, like, are you a man going to say I was a, a victim of domestic abuse? Who's going to believe you? Tell the world, Johnny. Yeah. Tell them, Johnny Depp, I am man. I'm a victim too of domestic violence right. and see how many people believe or side with you. At a separate point, by the way, there's another one I didn't quote to you. He asked her, do you think you physically abused me? This is a different recording. I don't remember where it is, right? Mm. Do you think you physically abused me? And she, first of all, she couldn't quite answer the question for her. She's like, I, I, uh, and then finally she goes, Look, I'm like 115 pounds or something like that. I couldn't, I couldn't, have I ever been able to knock you off your feet? Is what she said in the recording. Have I ever been able to knock you off your feet? And he said, why did you try? Mm. I think she reiterated too, like what jury, <laughs> judge and jury is going to believe you if you go in and say this, yeah. which is funny because, you know, they believed him they ultimately, thankfully. A lot of what she does is like classic abuser tactics. Like no one will believe you. You're lying. That's not what happened. What's the thing again? If it didn't, what are the whole thing? Oh, if yeah, it didn't yeah. happen. I, I know what you're talking this. about, but I don't remember. That didn't happen. And if it did, well, it wasn't that bad. And if it was, well, it's not a big deal. And if it is, well, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. And if it was, I didn't mean it. And if I did, you deserved it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, That's kind of the that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. for sure. And that explains, it's essentially what she says most of the time when she's really pressed on certain issues. I think they call it the narcissist prayer. What is that? Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's the narcissist prayer. Okay. <laughs> uh, so looks like we should probably pause there and make this a two-parter since there's a lot to talk about. Oh yeah. Let's take a little, let's take a little breaky break. Let's take a little breather. We've been talking about some pretty heavy stuff anyway, and yeah. it's going to be a long conversation. So yeah. yeah. What do you say we end right here and let's end it right here and pick up in another episode. Sounds good. So uh, this has been another episode of Adulted Friends. If you enjoyed this, please follow us wherever you like to listen. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, anywhere you like to listen, we're probably there. And also try to follow us on Facebook. If you have Facebook, Josh keeps our Adulthood Friends page pretty updated. And uh, yeah, anything else to add there, Josh? Well, I guess the stuff I was going to say, we could just continue in the next episode. That's true. We sure could. But yeah. I just wanted another disclaimer here mm -hmm. that just because I'm talking about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial doesn't mean that I'm... Uh, You're not a misogynistic dick face? Or what? I like people not to think that I'm a misogynistic dick face. Oh, okay. Well, let's see if you can change their mind in the next half of this episode. Tune in to find out if Josh becomes more or less of a misogynistic dick face. Oh. If he was one to start with. I'm just kidding, Josh. I obviously don't think that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know nobody can see his face, but it's kind of sad. Go listen to the feminism episode, I promise. Yes, go listen to the feminism episode. I promise you'll hear a different side. And see proof that 
Josh is, in fact, not uh, misogynistic. Well, no, I will never say I'm not capable of making mistakes because I'm not perfect. Oh, you're definitely and... capable of making mistakes. Nobody's saying, I wasn't yeah. saying you're not capable of making mistakes. I'm always open to learning and being better, right? I'm the most open ever. No, that was... No, my... but I can't help but express my opinions. And I like you, like, we, that's what we're doing here. We're expressing what we believe or know to be true or what we believe that we know to be true. Yeah, and I'm always open to, like, I think probably seen within an episode that my opinion has changed given different perspectives. And I think that's a good thing. Like, we don't come with our opinions, like, ironclad. This yeah. is the way it is if I'm given new evidence, you know. Yeah. Like what we said. Yeah, yeah and like anything, we're talking about this trial. Why? Because it just happened and it gives us a kind of jumping off point yeah. for this episode, yeah. right? To be able to talk about the subject matter. So that's why we're focusing on it. Yeah. You know? And it's something people are listening to and people are interested in already. So yeah. yes. And also because you love Johnny Depp. I don't. Oh my God. I don't care. Anymore. I don't Depp. love him anymore. I fan. loved him when I was younger. He was like Doesn't change. I... my first celebrity crush, basically. Oh my gosh. So you were really into Johnny Depp. Well, when I was a te- like a younger teen, I hate that I just said this and now it's recorded and now you're going to. It's not the first time you said it. It's not the first time I said Well, when I was younger. Yeah. I liked him. I, I don't think that's that weird. I think that's pretty common because he has like almost a feminine, like, are you saying because you like feminine? No, I think when you're younger, men. you're more. I, Josh, I don't want to go into my <laughs> my teenage attraction to your Johnny crush Depp. on Johnny Depp. Yeah. All right. What other movies was he in? Oh my god. Sweeney Todd. I went on a first date once while oh, watching Sweeney Todd. That's a weird first date, but it may, it suits you. It led to a year and a half long relationship. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so that worked out. <laughs> Let's uh, put an end to this thing. Right? We're abusing people's time. Yeah, right we're, now. yes.